morning, everyone. It's Evan Ross Katz. I am senior style editor here at Mike.com. I am joined by one of the most understated drag queens in <laughs> all the land. <laughs> Lady Bunny, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Of Hi. course. So we're here today to talk about sort of the wide-ranging criticism around drag and the rigid constructs that seem to be growing and growing. So I want to start with your entry into drag. When, what was your first exposure to drag? Well, I threw on a wig and jumped in a horse and buggy and went over to a, a cotillion. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, oh, when was I first in drag? You know or what? No, when was the first time you were exposed to it? Even before? Oh, exposed to I snuck into a club at 13 in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and got to see, uh, you know, people think RuPaul is my drag mother. Actually, it was Tasha Lene Khan, who is still working today in Chattanooga, and she was just the, the stage presence and everything. I saw the other drag queens working there, too, but, uh, you know, and I was just like, you know, my, my mom, I love her. She's not a glamour puss, so in Chattanooga, where else was I going to go? I'd never seen, who sequin gowns and like, you know, except for Oscar ceremony or whatever. So it's like, you know, the false eyelashes, the giant wigs and whatever. To me, that was the, that was like, you know, I just immediately gravitated towards it. And that they could tell, you know, like, oh, this chicken, is this like, you know, is this like a chaser? Or is this like, no, no, this is one that wants to be us. <laughs> and so do you recall the first time you put on drag? I mean... I had, I lived in drag as a child because, you know, I'm from down south. So, you know, with the, with the long t-shirts and the short shorts, you didn't even look like I had any shorts on. So, I, and I had long hair. So, I, I mean, I, I, honey, I was never in the closet. Let's put it that way. So what was your early understanding of what a drag queen is? You know, glamorous, but then there are always the comedy drag that would come out and do a number with a bottle of liquor and a blacked out tooth to maybe some, you know, Millie Jackson thing or some, you know, uh, so, so I mean, th th there were always different kinds of drag. I mean, some would be trans performers who did drag. Some would be, um, you know, uh, <laughs> actual celebrity impersonators and some would take the music of Patti LaBelle or Cher and make it their own or mix it up and edit it or whatever. So yeah, I've, I've, I've always been aware of, of many different kinds. I mean, some sang live. And so you came up in the Atlanta club scene. What was the response from your from your mind in terms of how different audience members receive the various types of drag? Well, Rue, Paul, and I were roommates in Atlanta, and they, have you heard of Rue? Ooh, girl. Attention all queens. Attention all queens. Don't be screwed. You go get first. She's big, right? Yeah, yeah, well, she's seen better days. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the, like I have. Uh, no, uh, I mean, we were flat broke in Atlanta, Georgia, and on the gay scene, the drag du jour was pageant drag, which was extremely polished, bugle beads, Melissa Manchester, you know, ballads, very, very serious, you know, like groomed, you know, whatever. RuPaul were, and I were in like, I, I mean, I was literally wearing like gray, short, Dorothy Zbornak wigs from a thrift store. I mean, Rue was, had a mohawk, carried a briefcase, and would wear fishermen's wading boots. You know, so, I mean, we were looked at as, like, okay, we get that it's supposed to be <laughs> New Wave or, you know, artsy-fartsy, but they kind of hated us. I mean, they tolerated us, but it was kind of like the crazy kids. We were, we were club kids, essentially. Yeah. Rue was a club kid. I just didn't have any money to get my drag together. <laughs> Did you see yourself um, in the idea of club kids and drag? Did you see them as one? No, but I'm often associated with the club kids scene because I worked in it. But, I mean, my, my drag is drag. And you're like, no, bunny, it's really freaky. You look insane. You don't look like you're from the... <laughs> <laughs> I never intended to be a club kid. Maybe my drag was so off that it turned out to be... But club kid was assigning itself often to no gender, sometimes to, you know, alien you know, or or clown. I mean, literal clown. How did you land on this look, and what gave you the conviction to know this is my drag? Um. Well, 
tell you one thing that I think is interesting. Um, there's a lot of sheep in the drag community, and I think it is hilarious that after Bianca won wearing lower lashes, which I've always worn, I didn't invent it. They had that in the late 60s, and I'm sure they had it in the show business before that. But I, I, I love that that's like a trend now that they think, oh, maybe I can get on Drag Race if I do the RuPaul Drag Race, you know, a zombie with this kind of contour and this kind of padding and a rose in the hair, just like Ru. But the funny thing to me is like, well... It's like the I don't wear lower lashes because uh, they're trendy, or because Bianca won a couple years doing it. I wear them because I have beady, close set eyes, and it makes my <laughs> eyes look bigger. So this is actually corrective makeup for my face that has developed. My, if you want to call it my aesthetic, it might be a little bit too high tone for for what you're looking at right now <laughs> at ten a.m. in the morning. But uh, uh, developed as, as a result of me seeing photos and thinking, "Oh, girl, not the." Not the dark maroon lipstick that makes you look like a grim snapping turtle. No, we don't need to do that. So, it's just, you know, just I, 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 I learn, and also just starting out on a budget. I mean, some of the, some of the, the very, uh, I mean, the Drag Race fans are obsessed over the quality of your lace fronts, and I mean, if you're, just, if you're just some kid that wants to start doing drag. You can't afford a wig that costs thousands and made of human hair. You know, it's just like what they're putting. There, there is practically a uniform now where it's like your nose has to have the hieroglyphics painted on it to make it look, you know, uh, absolutely as small as possible. There has to be highlighter here, and you can't wear a flat wig. Yeah, you can if you can pull it off. You know, um, you have to be padded a certain way. I'm sick of the rules. If drag is self-expression, we need to kill the, the, the these rules and stop. I mean, Rue, from the very beginning, has brought on nutty characters. <laughs> It would be so boring if every contestant marched out there just like a sizzling fox with uh, everything perfect. You need the um, the 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 different ones to to uh, add spice. And if you really think of it, Sharon Needles, Jinx Monsoon, and Bianca Del Rio. Or Bob the Drag Queen, none of them would win a traditional beauty pageant, would they? Right. No, but there's great things about them, and they've gone on to have very successful uh, careers because of those things. Bianca's a great comic, packing halls around the world. Bob is hilarious too. Jinx can sing her ass off. Uh, Sharon connected, you know, her, her album went to the top of you know iTunes chart. So, um, you know, she's also political and a, a vegetarian. I mean, there's there's the, the, there it's it's drag can be many things. And I, I don't understand. Um, well, a lot of drag fans are young. They can't even afford, uh, they can't even get, get into clubs if they want to. I mean, they're too young to, to get into clubs. So they don't have any experience with drag except drag race. And I think that gives them a limited perspective because it is a competition show. So of course, it's based on judging. So based on these, you know, they can't get into a club, but they can watch YouTube tutorials on makeup. So they can sit, you know, and say, oh no, that contour is too harsh. You didn't blend this and that. There is no one formula. Trixie Mattel, perfect point. She's one of the most popular queens. Well, Trixie is a friend of mine, so I can say this knowing that I'm not insulting her. That face is demented. Trixie Mattel <laughs> looks like a glamorous, demented clown. That was her intent. Right. And she now has a, 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 a spinoff show. If Drag Race actually seeks to find America's next drag superstar... Rue broke rules. Uh, he sang live. He, you know, released music. He hosted a talk show on VH1. Now he has a, a reality show. Uh, he wore blonde wigs, not the most common color, you know, for uh, black performers to wear. So, I, I, I mean, Violet Chachki, a great performer, she s strips down to pasties on her male uh, nipples with no boobs. So is that androgynous? Is that wrong? I've seen it bring the house down. The very fact that there is no boob there 
it's a twist that make that that you she's already been twirling on this thing doing amazing stunts and then there's that at the end that's a real corker so i think that's interesting i i and, and you know i i i don't understand milk is getting criticized because he is you know, different or androgynous, and I've seen photos of him, you know, with a mustache. Well, you know what? <laughs> Why are we telling drag queens how to express themselves if this is, you know, our, our self-expression? Let's see some good old-fashioned Texas drag. Let's see some, you know, Brooklyn, New York, uh, you know, experimental drag. That is the scene that Milk is for. Now, I saw... Uh, one of Milk's look that I just tickled me, where he was a uh, female bodybuilder, you know, very tan with the muscles. You've all seen the type in real life. These women, you know, who are very very muscular. So I thought, well, what a, what, what that is camp. It's like so. There's a man impersonating a woman who looks like a man because of weightlifting, steroids, steroids, or whatever. So um, I mean, I thought that was interesting. It was a different twist. I mean, there's there's. There's, you know, I mean, I don't want to spout platitudes because that's RuPaul's show. Uh, but, you know, there's many, you know, colors in the crayon box. I mean, you know, wh wh why not have all of them? So you mentioned rules a lot. And I'm curious, the rules seem to have changed, at least from my perspective. Um, what were the rules around drag and your understanding when you were first coming up? The rules were be talented and capture my attention and more focus on what you do on stage than uh, how long it took you to get ready. Because you could spend five hours on your makeup and then they say, ladies and gentlemen, Pearl. <laughs> and the performance is just not there. I mean, it seems like people are increasingly more and more critical. I think we could easily attest that to Drag Race. But did you see that shift happening before Drag Race? Drag Race is a competition show. So it may be challenges, or it may be runway looks, or it may be a lip sync performance. But yes, the judges judge on that. We get off on cheering for our favorites. But it's so odd to say milk or so-and-so doesn't belong. Now, if you want to say they suck at what they're doing, but if you're saying that milk's androgynous take on drag doesn't belong... Isn't that flying in the face of kind of what everyone else is opening up to? That we need diversity, that we need to be inclusive of different gender variations, of different races, of, you know, different body sizes, you know, including, you know, plus sizes and, you know, different, you know, diff changing beauty standards with noses, if you are to believe Alicia Keys, we should not wear makeup anymore. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> uh, I'm a 55-year-old fat man. I can't get paid without makeup. Fuck you. I, I can't afford your Botox and uh, professionally shot things where you're telling me, don't wear, don't wear any makeup. Fuck you. So why do you think people are so critical now? Because it definitely seems like over the last couple of seasons, there's been increased criticism, specifically around presentation. Um, what do you think has caused this sort of amplification of that? I have I have observed this prominent queens from drag race gagging at the discussions on Reddit. Mm. It is really quite vicious and it's also not very open like to other things. And you know what? It's also mean. And it has if if drag race is for Rue to be, you know, uh Dr. Phil looking like Urkel, um, I mean a mentor, uh, you know, uh to these queens, then you know, um that and you're like calling in death threats to Jasmine Masters or you know, Roxy. You know, maybe maybe the the show is unhinging some people. Death threats. Yeah. I mean, you really. There's nothing. I'm glad my friend RuPaul has a hit show that people are living vicariously through. But you're dumb and you're mean and you're not inclusive. And you know, it's like you have every right to not like what you like, but to try to slam you know, uh, something that is not your cup of tea. I mean, Bruce Springsteen isn't my cup of tea. But, 
uh, I can see that what he it, it, it's a well crafted you know song, and I've never you know noticed like Milk doing the looks that he chose poorly. He doesn't ex it may not be your vision, but he doesn't execute them poorly. He executes them well. Do you feel like people are too critical of the queens? I'm more interested in what they do on stage. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, because the show is a, a variety of, here's this challenge, you know, you get your points on that. I mean, it's obvious that the fans are going to weigh in and say, you know, um, oh no, uh, they should not have sent so-and-so home because... Morgan's lip sync was clearly better, yet they sent her home. So there are times when the fans who were really in, in, into it catch these moments where maybe someone bites the dust um, because it fits their narrative mm. uh, that the producers have already, uh, you know, because, you know, when, when, when you're doing reality TV, the editor is the script writer. Is there any kind of drag you would look at and say distinctly, that's not drag? Bianca Del Rio. Same one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love Bianca Del Taco. Um, her drag is false. I mean, I don't, you can say that, you know, she has, you know, raccoon eyes. I mean, she, her, the, 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 when they all win drag race, their lips all get plumped up. And I saw her recently and she looked like she had rimmed a wasp nest. Oh but uh, the, the, you could you could look at Bianca and say, "Ooh, you know, that's makeup is too heavy." Like the, 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 some guy from Ecuador, fourteen years old, uh, contacted her and said, "Your your makeup is too harsh. Your eye makeup is too harsh." Mm -hmm. And she wrote him back and said, "Honey, I've been doing drag for eighteen years professionally." So I'm not worried about what you think. And P.S. I'm surprised you even have internet in your hut. So I mean, it's like yes, there are all these like teenage experts mm. who have never even been into a club to see that you know. Um, well, first of all, if you go to a club, you never hear late. You never hear the backstory, which is so crucial to reality TV. You presume that they are booked because of talent. So you never hear, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage. She was sent to prison for, uh, uh, she uh, was dropped off at a bus stop by her mother. You know, she is HIV positive. Put your hands together for the phenomenal. You know, da 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 da. -da. You never hear that because the reality shows focus on the backstory. If you went to a club, you would understand that most drag queens are not booked there unless they are talented. So there is drag race and then there is the world of drag. Where do you think the obsession with female illusion came from? Well, you're when when we say that drag is an expression, you're expressing something that you feel is in you. We all have those magic moments in the mirror. Um, okay, I haven't had one in a few decades. <laughs> where 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 you're sitting there and you're just feeling the fantasy and you're going, I think if I if I just you know, oh girl, that could be you know. I mean, so you know, you're trying to enhance. You know, I mean, in, in, in truth, I mean, I'm practically, like, my coloring is like an albino. So, I mean, there's very little drama to my eye, which is why I like to wear heavy, you know, eye makeup. Because I knew that underneath there, there was an eye that is pretty, but it didn't look pretty. And now underneath that, there is a bag, which isn't that pretty. But we're not going to focus <laughs> on that because that's ages. Um, the, uh, so, yeah, I mean, but, well, you know, people are going to say, you know, about drag race also, she's the old one. She'll be off, you know, within a season or two. Um, so maybe there will be an old one. Um, that, you know, stays on for a while. Chad Michaels, you know, may be old, but she is absolutely fantastic. And those costumes, you know, uh, my God. Maybe we w there's a bearded drag queen. I rang in the New Year in Fayetteville, Arkansas, and there was a bearded drag queen there. So after Conchita Wurst winning the Eurovision, uh, we've been seeing more and more, you know, bearded drag. So why do you think, given this milk controversy and around this notion of boy drag, why do you think the fans feel 
the need to be so vocal about their precise definitions of what drag is. And I see a lot of them adding milk in their tweets, you know, trying to get his attention. Well, tell me about what some of the specific uh, criticism is. Because I uh, texted Milk and I said, you know, I'm, I'm not aware of all the controversy. I want to hear it from, you know, the horse's mouth. And he didn't get back to me. I guess he's busy getting ready for the Perry Ellis fashion show So, may, in which he's modeling. So maybe he's not interested <laughs> in what the 15-year-old from Ecuador has to say. Well, I'll give you a brief rundown. He's been doing a lot of Club Kid-inspired looks that do not include the tucking, do not include the breastplate, do not include the padding, etc. And I think a lot of people have been critical of that and sort of saying that's not drag, which to our earlier conversation, it's like who gets to define what drag is and why do they feel this need to be so vocal about calling him out? Where do you think that comes from? Because that seems like a newer phenomenon, that of critiquing things that we ourselves are not experts on. Well, like I say, these people don't know the real world of drag because they can't get into a club yet. So they sit and watch YouTube tutorials and base all, all of the, they, they think that there is a uniform. And I see this with so many young queens who are like, you know, striving to put that oversized flower or ornament in, in the hair like, like Rue does. Or, you know, buying the girdles or, you know, padding so perfectly. To tell you the truth, if you think that there's any one secret to get on Drag Race, it's this. Be ready to come out as HIV positive. Be ready to have a backstory to where you, oh, she was Miss So-and-so, and then So-and-so got the crown, so now we're going to pit them together. That's what gets you on Drag Race. But there's another way, which is, is, you know, infinitely better and will help you even if you don't get on Drag Race. Develop your own thing. Then they'll come for you. I don't mean come for you as in come for you, but they'll come to get you because you've created something unique and you've created something different and that's made you stand out. You're not cookie cutter. You haven't padded your hips to perfection and that doesn't even interest you. So like I say, there's this whole dialogue about 58 Facebook, you know, gender identities and then you're going to tell me that the drag world is going to be limited? Why? Why? I mean, do, do, are y'all like the Trump voters of uh, drag fans? I mean, it's like, no, we're going to make drag stay like this. It has to be like this. Do you want only one race to be in there, too? It's like, you know, this is... But listen, speaking of race, here's something, one of the dumbest things I've ever heard from uh, a drag race fan. It was early in the show, and someone was talking about season three, and the first two winners were B.B. and Tyra. Someone actually wrote, well, you know Rue is never going to pick any uh, white queen. And I'm like, as if Rue is some revolutionary black panther, you know, whose, you know, mission is to... <laughs> I mean, come on, come on. I mean, that's, that's, that, that's, that's, I mean, that wasn't even a 15 year old. That was a friend of mine. And I'm like, uh, this is not, yeah, this is just dumb. Have there been other, um, c contestants who were not black who won since then? There have. Has it been, <laughs> has it included Latino and Asian and white yes. and Jewish? So I'm curious if you were in Milk's position, you know, you're on the show and you're receiving all this vocal a pushback from fans week to week, would you respond to it? And if so, how? I would say, catch me on the runway at Perry Ellis' show and fuck you and your small mind, narrow mind. What? We're the LGBTIQA, whatever element OP community it is today. We're, we're the ones striving for acceptance and you're like, no, rigid lines in the sand. And you're 15 years old? My God, I can't wait until you grow up and your heart is hardened. <laughs> it's like you're already a Nazi. You know, the, it's, I, I let people be free to do what they want. First of all, um, if you want to see standard, traditional drag, go to a pageant. That's all you'll see. You won't see one comedy queen. You won't see anything like Ornatia. You know, um, go to uh, your local gay bar where I'm pretty sure they're still doing Lady Gaga with shoulder pads and the big glasses with studs on them. I'm pretty sure. If you don't want to be challenged or see anything new, then, um, I mean, you know, the, the, like big, big cities are where the, sometimes 
sometimes the new ideas come from most often. Milk is representing Brooklyn, which is known for its experimental, you know, uh, every witch gender but loose. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's uh let let him do let, let him do his thing, you know. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean it, it's it's uh I'm glad that Rue doesn't put all the same age, all the same size. Imagine if Rue didn't have a big girl on, they would be calling the show, you know, fat shaming. Do you feel like since your early days in Atlanta and even moving here? Do you feel like the culture of sisterhood among queens has changed over the years? Do you think it's more divided? No, the sisterhood is very much intact. But this again, this is something for drag race fans mm. who don't know the real world of drag. I'm not saying that there's not an intersection. There's a huge intersection. But the show thrives on bitchy reads and that's how they edit it okay because bitchy train wreck behavior is what drives reality tv right whether it's atlanta housewives snatching a wig off one could argue looking at the current president that have we rewarded train train wreck reality behavior enough there's one running the country now but this is what thrives this is what reality tv is runs on it's the engine right in the real drag world of course we love to gossip and dish and whatever but we are not Active, and drag queens are territorial by defini definition. I mean, if you do drag one time a year as Barbara Streisand, you have to believe that nobody can do yentl like you're yentl. And you're not really, you haven't even been in the business. for So drag queens are very territorial. But, territorial. but I find that the, the sisterhood is intact because when the cameras of Drag Race are not rolling or the edits are made to show how bitchy everyone is, Drag queens actually are sisterly and would be the first, when we speak amongst ourselves, it isn't a non-stop bitch fest when it is. It's usually hilarious and meant to be fun. But I find we're more likely to compare notes on which booker, uh, you know, robbed you, which seamstress didn't get your uh, dress done on time or that fit, or which wig maker is a joke. There seems to be a generational divide that you're speaking to, which is that younger people... Are have you saying that young people can't identify with someone my age? That's ageist. <laughs> it's probably fat shaming, too. And I'll have you know that I identify as trans fats. So there. I'm really proud I just of shame myself. Um, it seems like young people, especially those that have not gone out to the clubs, are experiencing drag a lot, whether it be through the show or through YouTube and watching makeup tutorials and whatnot. Right. Broad question, but what do you think it's going oh, Okay, to are they watching uh, Drew Drogi as Chloe Savigny? I don't think it puts one uh, stitch of makeup on. Just a busted wig, but that thing is a genius with viral videos. Absolutely hysterical, completely fresh take. So, and that's drag, so, right? so I hope they're also watching the Christines with doing just brain-dead yet genius original music like African mayonnaise. I mean, she's a friend of mine, but she's a sick piece. <laughs> if you were to give people some recommendations, obviously obviously Christine is a great one. Who are some other queens that you think sort of exist out of many people's limited spectrum of what a queen is? Dina Martina. A lot of the, 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 the ones, you know, who used to get booked around the country because they had an act. Um, you know, Coco, I mean, they had they had an act, like a full act, like an hour-long one-woman show, mm -hmm. not just a hashtag. <laughs> you know, so, you know, Jackie B, Coco Peru, I mean, there's there's tons of them that, that when, when, when it wasn't just Drag Race Girls, they were getting booked based on what they could do on stage, not just because they had been exposed. Everyone has a different standards. Maybe you want pretty queens. Maybe you want comedy queens. Maybe you want outrageous. This took 15 hours um, to, you know, put on makeup. What I, what I'm into is the performance. And, you know, th this is what is odd to me about Drag Race because it de-emphasizes the performance in favor of challenges. <laughs> 
which no drag queen actually has to make a dress out of a newspaper in 10 minutes. And then, you know, I, I listen, I'm not into the whole competitive element of it. Rue, I'm glad you have a hit show. Now you can pay me that, that drug money that you borrowed so much. Wait, wait for my book. Um, but it's like, you're, the, the, the whole premise of the show kind of gives me a giggle because Rue is sitting there judging on Queen's for their hair, makeup, costume, and performance. Has she done her own of any of those in 15 years? I mean, it's the number one queen. The number one queen in the land. Booker on a talk show, Urkel shows up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so. I mean, the idea of, of of these standards coming from someone who's 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 uh you know uh, uh own drag is done by someone else. I'm just not saying that Rudy doesn't have any any input in. It. I'm sure he has loads. If he doesn't, then you need to get someone else. You know, right, right away. But it's 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 just a it it it, it it's a. A, a competition show is going to be judgmental. But you've helped illuminate it very much for us today, <laughs> <laughs> truly. Um, Lady Bunny, thank you so much. For people that don't know where to find you online, can you help illuminate them some more? Uh, ladybunny.net or ladybunny77 at Twitter. Not verified because I like to keep you guessing. Yes. And <laughs> you can check out her website if you want to learn more about her upcoming shows as well. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to see you again soon. And don't cry over spoiled milk. I mean, spilled milk. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs>